Hello friends, this video on communication systems part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So what is modulation? We already spoke about it, right? But still let us have a quick review so that we can get back to the topic once again. What is modulation? The word modulation means modifying. Like you would have often heard uh, people saying, try to modulate your voice. That means try to modify your voice. Right, so the word modulate means to modify. So what is modulation? It is the superposition of information contained in low frequency message signal on a high frequency wave. Right, so let us quickly recap the same example of letter. So what happens is you want to send the letter. So letter is the message signal. Now how will that letter travel from Delhi to Bangalore. So it needs something which can carry it. So what is going to carry it? Something which has a higher frequency. The letter has a lower frequency. I mean, if the letter is carried by you, you have a lower frequency. You will just walk or you will max at, at the max, you will run. But even that will take a lot of time. But if you have something which can take the carry that later and travel really fast that will be great right so that is nothing but the high frequency wave or the courier wave so the courier wave actually carries the low frequency signal and takes it to the receiver where does it occur it occurs at the transmitter end so the same letter how will it reach from the transmitter to the receiver so this is your transmitter and this is your receiver. And what is your channel? Channel is, let us suppose, rail. So rail can be a channel, flight can be a channel. So what is your carrier? Carrier wave is the train. So the train actually carries the letter. Now since the train has a higher speed, so the letter also travels with the speed of the train. So how was modulation helpful in this case? Modulation was helpful because during the process of modulation, we could take out the benefit of a high frequency wave, right? That was the advantage of this process of modulation. So let us see why do we need modulation? That is an, a very important question. Why do we actually need an additional wave called a courier wave? Why do we at all need a high frequency wave? Now, when I talk about the example of the letter, you very clearly understand why we needed the train because it saves a lot of time. Now, let us try to understand it in terms of signal transmission. Why do we at all need this process of modulation for transmission of signals? Now, when I talk about the transmission of signals, there are a various factors which are involved or which can affect the transmission of signals. So let us look at the major factors which affect the signal transmission over long distances. So once we know, know the factors which affect the signal transmission, then we can see that if there is any need of having a high frequency wave, correct? Okay, so with this, that approach, let us try to understand the different factors which affect the transmission of signals over long distance. The first factor is size of antenna. So here you get a new term that is antenna, which we have not talked before. But antenna is something which all of you are aware of. Like you would have had a dish antenna for your television or you would have seen an antenna in your car for the radio or you would have seen an antenna in, uh, the, in the normal radio, right? So antenna is something which is a very common thing and all of us are aware of it. Effective power radiated by antenna, okay, that is another factor. Mixing up of signals from different transmitters. So these are three important factors which affect the transmission of signals over long distance. Now, just telling these three things doesn't make much sense to you, right? You don't understand how, how does the size of an antenna matter or how does the power radiated by an antenna matter at all? For that, let us start discussing each of these factors in detail one by one. So for that, let us first try to understand what is an antenna. Then we will see 
how the size of antenna affects signal transmission. So what is an antenna? It is an electronic device that converts electric power into radio waves and vice versa. As I mentioned before as well, when you look at the structure of a communication system, how does it look like? So when you look at the basic structure of a communication system, how is it? We had a source somewhere here, then we had a transmitter and then we had the channel and then here we had the receiver right and then from the receiver it went to the destination correct so where do you think there is a need to convert electric power or electric signals into radio waves or radio waves into electric signals so what is happening from the source comes the message signal the transmitter will convert whether it is an electrical or non-electrical signals, it will convert it into electrical signals which are capable of transmission. Now those electrical signals, how will they transmit through the medium? They need to be get converted into a radio waves, that is electromagnetic waves. So here we have an antenna. So what will this antenna do? This antenna will take the electric signals which are produced by the transmitter and convert them into radio waves and those radio waves will then propagate through the medium. Now how will the receiver receive those radio waves because the receiver is capable of understanding only the electric signals. So here again we have another antenna. So this is the receiving antenna. So what will this antenna do? This will convert the radio waves into electric power. So these electric signals will be interpreted by the receiver, right? So what is the purpose of antenna? It actually helps in converting the electric signals into radio waves and radio waves into electric signals, right? So it helps in radiating energy as electromagnetic waves through air or through free space. So it sends radio waves to distant sites and it also receives radio waves from sources. For example, here if you look at this antenna, this is a transmitting antenna because it sends the radio waves to distant places. And this is a receiving antenna because it receives the radio waves coming from distant places. So that is basically an antenna is. Right? It is also termed as aerial. This is another name for antenna. You would have seen this kind of antenna on your rooftops. Sometimes during for televisions and all, they use these kind of antennas as well. However, these days mostly you have the dish antennas which look somewhat like this. Right? So now you understand the purpose of antenna. What does an antenna basically do? Right? So now the question is, how does the size of an antenna affect the signal transmission or how does it affect the communication system? So that is the question. Now, a very important concept to understand here is that the size of an antenna should always be comparable to the wavelength of the signal. Let us note it down. The size of antenna should be comparable to the wavelength of the signal. Now you might ask why? How is the wavelength of the signal related to the antenna? So in the previous slide what did we see? What is the purpose of antenna? Its purpose is to sense the signal and then convert the signal into electromagnetic waves. Right? Now how do you think the antenna is going to sense the signal? with the help of the wavelength of the signal because wavelength of a signal actually makes you understand that there is a signal, right? So if the size of the antenna is not, if it is very less than the wavelength of the signal, what would happen? Or if it is very large as compared to the wavelength of the signal, what would happen? In either of these cases, the antenna will not be able to detect the presence of the signal or it will not be able to catch the signal. Just take a small example. Let us suppose that you have a small 
insect or you, let us suppose you have a small cat so this is a cat just imagine that this is a cat okay now you want to trap this cat so what, how do you do how can you do that you take a net right to trap this cat now let us suppose if you take a net which has very big holes right what is a net a net will basically have it is like you know, a, a, a too many threads just connected together so they'll have holes in between right now if you take a net net which has very big holes will you be able to catch this cat no why because the cat because now just imagine that this is the size of your antenna and the size of this cat is the wavelength of the signal let us suppose if this is the wavelength and this is your antenna size now if the size of the antenna is very big that means the holes in the net is very big what will happen when you try to catch the cat it will just pass through this these holes so you will not be able to catch it right now similarly if you want to catch the same cat and for that you take a very small net now what will happen when you try to catch this cat the cat is bigger than the net so the cat will not fit inside the net to be caught so you will not be able to catch the cat again so if you really want to catch this cat the size of the net the spacing of the holes in the net should be comparable to the size of the cat right so you should use the appropriate size of the net so similarly if the antenna has to catch a signal it will catch the signal with its wavelength so the size of the antenna should also be comparable to the wavelength of a signal right so that the antenna can properly sense the time variation of a signal because a signal is nothing it is it will it will keep on changing with time so the antenna should sense that time variation of the signal right so now we will see how the size of antenna affect the signal transmission we all know that lambda that is wavelength is related to frequency by this relation that is freak lambda or wavelength is equal to the speed of light divided by the frequency right now let us suppose if we have a signal if we have a signal with frequency around 20 kilohertz let us suppose if this is a signal which we have and we need an antenna to catch this signal so what would be the size of that antenna so the size of that antenna will be comparable to the wavelength of the signal so if we are able to find out the wavelength of the signal then we will be able to say how much should be the size of the antenna so let us try to find out the wavelength of the signal so wavelength would be equal to c divided by nu so c is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second and nu is 20 kilohertz that is 20 into 10 to the power 3 hertz so this comes out to be 1.4 into 10 to the power 4 meters which is nothing but 15 kilometers so that means this is the wavelength of the signal so what does that mean that means that the size of the antenna should be somewhere around 15 kilometers so do you think that it is feasible to construct an antenna whose size is 15 kilometers you understand right how long is 15 kilometers it's a huge distance so it is not feasible to construct an antenna of size 15 kilometers right so constructing this is not feasible so what does that mean that means that the size of an antenna also puts a restriction it puts a restriction to the transmission of signals so that means if i say that i cannot construct an antenna of just any sizes so that is same as saying that it is not possible to transmit signals of any wavelength right that means the size of the antenna is also putting a condition or a limitation to the wavelength of signal which can be transmitted so what do we see we see that 
wavelength is inversely proportional to frequency now in order that transmission happens if we want that signal transmission should happen successfully the antenna size should be within possible limits now the antenna size will be within possible limits only when the value of lambda is less because antenna size is directly proportional to lambda so antenna size is directly proportional to lambda now antenna size should be less so for that this lambda should also be less now if i want lambda to be less the value of frequency should be more that means frequency should be more right so what is our conclusion conclusion is that we want high frequency signals because if the signals have high frequency they will have lesser wavelength and if they have lesser wavelength the size of the antenna will be smaller right so the first factor which affects the transmission of signal says that high frequency signals are desirable right so we got one vote in favor of modulation because what is modulation it increases the frequency of the message signal by combining it with a high frequency wave that is the carrier wave so one vote for modulation so we understand one reason why modulation is needed thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again